moving on for the review for module three. Okay, on this problem, we're going to find the maximum number of real zeros, the maximum number of x intercepts, and the maximum number of turning points. What you are looking for here is the highest exponent. That is the degree of the function, and that tells you the maximum number of real zeros and the maximum number of x-intercepts. And then all you do to find the maximum number of turning points is that degree minus 1. So there would be 6 maximum turning points. All right, on this next problem, our function is f of x equals 1 fourth x squared minus 5. We are going to use the leading term test. So what that means is to find your leading term, which is the term that has the highest exponent, and we're going to get the end behavior from that. Now the exponent of that is even because it's 2. And 1 fourth is positive, which means we are looking for an even positive end behavior, which means both ends should be going up. The other thing that we can look for is the y-intercept. If I replaced all of the x's in this function with a zero, I would be left with 0 minus 5, which gives me negative 5. So that is going to be your y-intercept. So the two things I'm looking for are where <clears throat> both ends of the graph are going up and that it crosses the y-axis at negative 5. The only one that has those characteristics is that first one, the a. Okay, I'll look at it a little bigger, and you'll notice that both ends are going up, and it does have a y-intercept at negative 5. All right, on this next problem, again, I'm going to sketch this graph. <clears throat> My leading term here is negative x to the third, which means odd for the exponent and negative for the term. Odd negative in behavior means up on the left, down on the right. So when I am looking at these, A, both are going up, B has the correct in behavior, C, both ends are going down, and D has odd in behavior, but it's odd positive because it's down on the left and up on the right. So B would be the only thing that I could see that has the correct end behavior. Also, you'll notice that the y-intercept, if I replace all the x's in this function with zeros, I'm actually going to be left with y equals 0. And you'll notice it crosses the y-axis right at the origin, which would be that 0. All right, on this next problem, I'm actually going to use my knowledge of x-intercepts. Since it's in its factored form, I'm going to set the factors equal to 0. So my factors are negative x, I'll set that equal to 0. x minus 2, I'll set that equal to 0. And x plus 3, I'll set that equal to 0. So now, when I'm solving these for x, I'll have to divide both sides by negative 1 here. That gives me x equals 0. On this next one, I would add the 2 to both sides. So x equals 
2, and the last one, I would subtract the 3 from both sides. So x equals negative 3. So those are going to be the x-intercepts of the graph. Now, let's talk about the end behavior. In this function, here, if I foiled this to get x plus 3 times itself to get x plus 3 squared, it's going to give me an x squared as the leading term. Same thing with this one. It would give me an x squared. And then I would have to multiply it by that first factor, which is negative x. So if I multiplied those three factors together, it's going to give me negative x to the fifth power. That will give me my end behavior, which would be the exponent is odd, the term is negative, which means up on the left, down on the right. So let's look at these four graphs to see what has those characteristics. A is up on the left, down on the right, and so is B, up on the left, down on the right. C is the opposite of that, because it's down on the left, up on the right. And then D is both up. So I am looking at A or B. So now I'm going to make both of those graphs bigger and see if they have the right x-intercepts at 0, 2, and negative so let's look at A. Its x-intercepts are here at negative 2, 0, and positive 3. And remember, the x-intercepts are supposed to be at 0, positive 2. So positive 2 would be here, and negative 3 would be here. So these actually don't have the correct x-intercepts. So let's look at the other one that had the right end behavior. So, x-intercepts, this one's at negative 3, 0, and positive 2, which is what we want. And it has that correct in behavior, which is up on the left and down on the right. All right, on this next problem, since it's not in its factored form, if it's not in factored form, it's easier to see end behavior and your y-intercept. So my end behavior is odd for the exponent, positive because 9 is positive. So I should be down on the left and up on the right. <clears throat> so you'll notice when I'm looking at my problems, C has that, and so does D. So I do want to also think about where my y-intercept would be. If I replaced all of the x's with zeros, I would have 9 times 0 to the third minus 6 times 0 squared minus 36 times 0 plus 24. That constant is going to be your y-intercept because all of the other terms, when you put zeros in them, will just go away. So I am looking at C and D. So looking at C first, it has the right in behavior. And look where its y-intercept is. It should be at positive 24. 
Well, if this is my origin, and this is 250, that means each one of these are going by 50s. So this y-intercept would be at positive 24.